Morning guys, Calvin from the Cartoon Company. I do lots of 1UZ repairs and conversions, so if you're into that sort of work, subscribe to my channel. Today we're going to talk about idling issues, and mainly the idle speed control motor, um, or idle air control motor, on the front of the plenum on a 1UZ. We'll have a quick look over here. Uh, we've got the top plenum here. So that's off a saw that we've just uh, fitted up done a little bit of a repair on, tap it, cover gaskets and bits and pieces and we've also fitted some extractors that look like this into that saw, trying to get a bit more performance so I have the, the, the plenum off the vehicle here and here's the idle speed control motor now on the early 1UZs, as far as I know there are two main idle speed control motors there's uh, this one with the three screws around it so that's the early one and that's easy to repair and easy to put a new set of bearings in. And then there's the later one, which some people will claim aren't rebuildable. They look like this. So that we're going to call that the non-rebuildable one. And later on, I'll show you how to rebuild it. So if you're experiencing idle speed, or idling issues on your 1UZ, things to check is first the wiring. Now, the, uh, I did a video on the biggest wiring mistake on 1UZ. Watch that. Do that test. If it fails, sort your wiring. I can supply, at a cost, diagrams on correctly wiring 1UZs. Next, you need to look at things like air leaks. Check there's no air leaks. Uh, these are particularly important. I'm seeing this a lot these days. And just slight stumbles off the bottom. Injector seals. That is a rubber seal. 20... Hmm, it's a 2000 and... 27 years ago, 28 years ago, Toyota fitted that seal. It was leaking just slightly, but on all injectors, eight little air leaks causing a problem. You've also got the throttle body. So check it's clean. As you can see, this one isn't, but it will be soon. Check the throttle position sensor is adjusted correctly, and I've done a video on how to easily check that and change that. Check the dampener is there and in working condition. Though that's that's only on some. The, the 20 series suffer more because their idle speed's a bit lower. This is not the throttle stop. Do not adjust it. That should be set standard. And see how much that's poking out? If you see one that's been screwed all the way down, the person who's been working on it doesn't know what they're doing. The correct throttle stop is this one, and it should not be adjusted it doesn't need to be set everything else up so on this vehicle here this hose here has just been replaced the old one was taped up we have it over here here it is hard as rocks with tape around it causing a little air leak that's not monitored by the airflow meter that hose pcv valve again hard as rocks all those little air leaks can cause problems with your idling. The other thing is the airflow meter must sense all the air going into the engine. That's why it's important to not just put a filter on these idle speed control units. They have to run into the air system. And interesting enough, well for me, they've got two different size pipes. Oh, sorry. Pipes are hard. Hose are soft. So hose, H-O-S-E, two different sizes. The later one, that non-rebuildable one that we're going to rebuild, has a bigger hose. And I believe that's a 19. I should always check that. So the later one is 19 millimeter. The earlier one is around about 16 millimeter. 5.8 They have the water hoses going through them and on my throttle body mod I removed the water hoses running through the throttle body and at the same time I remove it through the stepper motor like this and A little tech tip for you On the non EGR so the boys in America might have trouble But they have this little blanking grommet on the non EGR versions and that works perfectly for blocking off the water fitting on the back of the engine this one here so when I remove the water lines I just I just crimp them in the vise 
give them a wiggle, pry bar on behind and they pop out. They just pressed in. And then I've got the die grinder in and cleaned it up a bit. So let's pull this one apart. And then the screwdriver. So I buy my bearings. Oh, wait a minute. We probably should test the resistance. So to start off, we'll check the resistance before I get in with my screwdriver. So the main thing I'm worried about is it being even. And very interesting, the resistance between the early ones and the late ones is a little bit different. So check, the power goes to the two center pins and the windings are to each of the outsides. So we'll check this winding here. 21 ohms. 21 ohms, we'll check the other windings. 21 and 21. So as long as they're even, I'm pretty happy. On the later one, 43, 43, 43, 42 point something, 43. So I'm happy enough for that. she pops apart oh look at this one look how much crap is on there <coughs> so making sure they're clean is a great idea and in here is disgusting wow so I was doing this the other day and then realized I didn't have any bearings hence I've already got one apart We undo these three screws. There is a seal in here. Check that seal is okay. These boy birds are bloody noisy. Just gonna put a little line. So I don't fiddle so much when I'm trying to put it back together. And there we go. And in the bottom of here, there's a little spring to make sure that stays in there. Wind it out. They make a little bit of noise. Let's get that apart. So that one pretty much just slips off. The other one's a bit trickier. And this is where people get damage. Try not to drop it on the ground. I have broken one when I dropped it, I broke the magnets. <clears throat> suitable socket and a hammer. That's not a suitable socket. There's that bearing, and there's that bearing. So I have my bearings by, by the 10, so I do quite a lot of these. So it's a 6902, and it's a 608. You just sit it on. Careful because that one is plastic, so it's easy to break. If you're a little bit timid, using the vise as a press can work okay. And it doesn't take much to push them on, like so. It's nice. With them cleaned, 
I do recommend just a little bit of lubricant. All right, with it cleaned up, make sure the washer doesn't fall out. Pop that in there. Pop it back together. And we put the screws back in. Hold the little nuts in place. So with the seal sitting in place, slide it back together and pop the screws in. Two early stepper motors, all done. When you refit the stepper, it's important to go through uh, the, this, the reset process. Sometimes I call it a relearn, but it's not really a relearn. It's, it's resetting the, the computer so it learns. So it resets the stepper correctly to the right idle. And they're, they're pretty primitive, these things. So they're aiming for a, a certain number of steps, which is meant to maintain the correct idle. And so that's why everything else being correct is so important. So when you put it on, uh, I generally, you'll see me in some of the videos, I will fire it up and I'll run it for about 20 seconds and then I'll turn it off and I'll do it three to five times until it stabilizes and it's idle. And then you're allowed to go through a heat cycle so it warms all the way up and the idle speed should drop down. I've left these reeds to be open for starting. And when they start, they should uh, have a nice cold idle, should uh, be up above a thousand. And then as it comes down, uh, settling between six and seven hundred, seven fifty. They should have a little bit of a flare on hot start. So that's the rebuilding of the easy stepper motor, along with the screws. Uh, I think we'll move on to doing that non-rebuildable one now, and uh, we'll show you how that that one can actually be rebuilt. Next, we're going to rebuild the unrebuildable uh, IAC. This one's already been done. So we've got a bit of sealant tucked at one end. And if you dig in there, there's a roll pin, but the top side is blind. We have drills for that. So if we aim about there, there's a hole exposed. Here we go, and same on this side. And then our punch. And I'm going to mark this firmly where it sits. Because you need to put the roll pins in the right place when you put it back together. My punch is just a smidgen tight. So these later ones do have smaller bearings. And I went to my cupboard and my cupboard was bare today. But we'll at least get it apart and show that they can come apart. So that's the roll pins out. We pop the sealant off, and out it comes. There we have that. So we have the body, and we have the unit that can't be pulled apart, apparently. This will screw out. The pintle will screw out. There we go. And we're left with the this bit here. So here I've drilled a little hole just in through the edge here and I've popped in a punch 
I've popped in a unit that can turn this. We've almost got that coming out. Out of the factory, these were glued together. Hence why people think they can't be pulled apart and rebuilt. So the process, once you've got this apart to replace these bearings is just the same. That one, I think we can hear that one. And it has no spin once we let go. That one was kind of okay. So that stepper motor was never going to uh, work if it went onto a car like it was. So there we have the unrebuildable stepper motor, which we've just proved is rebuildable in parts. The center magnet is much smaller than the uh, early one. And both sides are plastic, so just be really careful taking them off. Get some new bearings, which unfortunately my cupboard was bare. Press it back together, a little bit of epoxy resin, and it all goes back together, holds in place, and works just lovely. So I hope that's been helpful, and it proves that you can rebuild all 1UZ stepper motors, or idle speed control motors, off the non-VVTIs. Um, and we'll talk to you again. Catch you later.